Hi everyone, welcome back. I wanted to show you something that I got the other day. I got this new tripod, which is super cool for filming with. Um, I got a new head for my phone since it was broken. Um, it's an adapter for cell phones. And then I got this 50 inch tripod. It comes down to just about, it looks like it's about 18 inches long. Well, wait, this is 12 maybe 16 inches from end to end, comes in a zipper packet. I got it for like next to nothing. The whole thing, um, buying the thing for my cell phone to film with, and this very lightweight tripod um, was like under $24, I think, with tax and everything. So, and this is so light. I mean, it is probably doesn't even feel like it weighs a pound maybe it does weigh a pound but I can lift it with one finger no problem and it's not heavy at all so um, anyway I'll show you what it looks like it's very lightweight I would not use it for my expensive DSLR camera um, and I don't use my DSLR camera for um, filming for a couple of reasons my lap laptop is old and it, uh, it's got a virus right now, so it's not even booting up. And the other thing is, is that my camera tracks too slowly and it has trouble focusing. So every time I put my hand down in front of me like this and lift it up, it tries to focus and then it doesn't focus on the paper where I'm painting or any of that. So this is the little attachment that I have for my phone. A lot of you asks, ask what I film with right I, right now I'm filming with an S7 Edge, but I'm waiting for the Note 8 to come out. I had the Note 7, which was the blowing up phone that Samsung had problems with. I had three of them, and they finally recalled them. Um, and I ended up with this phone, which was a downgrade for, um, in a level from Samsung's Note. The Note 8 is coming out in a few weeks, and I'll be switching back over to the Note 8 and um, then I will turn in this phone. But for right now, this fits with any cell phone. Um, it isn't a spring-loaded attachment, which I prefer, but this is a lot sturdier, and um, it just screws up and down to set it. So uh, that's not a problem. And it fits into a standard um, head for a tripod, and that's what this is. This is just a little plastic head. Another reason I would not use that on with my camera, I would always use a metal plate. I'm sorry, I keep saying head. I'd use a metal plate to attach to because plastic plates can crack and bend and all of that. But this lightweight tripod, um, it has very skinny legs, but it'll hold up my phone no problem. Um, and it gets to 50 inches. The 60 inch one was probably another $10. This one is sold by Amazon. It's called Amazon Basics, although there's a lot of them out there um, that I believe are probably the same tripod. But anyway, so that is what I film with. Um, and then for my editing, I do it right on my phone which is good for me because I have to lay down frequently and it allows me to um, um, do my editing you know, while I'm laying down. I don't have to have, be in front of a computer. And I use KineMaster, K-I-N-E-M-A-S-T-E-R, which is an app. Um, and I purchased the um, yearly or biannually or whatever um, membership for like $35 or something and it works just fine for me the only thing was is it used to have a lot of really cool extras and they removed them for some reason and have not put them back and when I contacted them three times I got a message saying we've received your message and we'll be back with you within 24 to 48 hours and I never hear from them so if you need service or anything like that forget it you're not going to get it with them but it is a good app so luckily I haven't needed any help um, and that's pretty much it now today what I'm doing is I'm just repainting this um, lighthouse the one that I did in my book 
a few weeks ago for my friend um, who, where is it, wanted the lighthouse. Oops, that's too far. It's back here somewhere. There it is. Um, this one. The Big Bay Lighthouse in uh, near Marquette, Michigan on Lake Superior. So I've re um, done it. I drew it onto this. I actually, I traced the house and recentered some problem areas that I had. Um, like this was set too far over to the left. It wasn't centered and then this wasn't right. Um, so I redid some things and then my roof was wrong here so I added some things in there and um, I'm just doing it. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the bench in this time or not. I may just leave the bench off. Um, the, the little seated bench that um, this thing. I think I might just leave it off. I don't know. I haven't decided. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and paint this and then I'll show it to you when I'm finished.
I'm going to have to step away from this for a while, but <clears throat> I need to put the pen in. Excuse me. Mm. And, you know, to put in the bricks here and that. I haven't put any of it in. I just added the extra color. The other thing, too, is the um, tripod I'm using turned out to be a pretty good deal. I'm really happy with it so far and how lightweight it is. I can even lift it up. I'm lifting it with just one finger right now. It's amazing. So I'm really happy with it. And for being under $25, dang, that's really good. Someone was asking me about um, fountain pens the other day, and I did want to show somebody what I meant by cartridges versus converters. Um, this is empty. This is my platinum carbon pen, one of them. I have two, and then this one I think is a Pilot or Pentel, I forget. Pilot, I think. But uh, platinum carbon pens are very inexpensive. They're really nice pens. I'm just going to go ahead and change the cartridge on this one because it, um, <coughs> it uh, emptied yesterday. So um, I had bought these cartridges years ago. And I'm not going to buy any more. I'm just going to get some platinum carbon ink to put in here. But this is my last cartridge I have. Um, and it's got a little ball, metal ball in the end, that when you push it in to the pen, it pops in there. When your pen is empty, you can hear, I'm going to shake it by the microphone. You can hear the clicking in there. That kind of clicking means that there's no ink left. It's clicking way too too easily and if you if your pen's starting to skip and you hear that that means that it's empty but you can reuse these <clears throat> if you don't have a a um, uh, converter like this pen has a converter it's the same pen and thanks to wine lover 215 Tom he gave me a converter and some ink and this converter I can use to just turn and, and put ink into the pen. It looks like I need to anyway. Um, and I'll do that right after I finish this, I think. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use this new cartridge. And I'm going to keep my old cartridge because I can use a syringe to put ink down inside of it. And then um, reuse it. That's the old one. And it really doesn't leak when you tip it over. So i um, just going to leave it there. And then I take this. I have to push it down on the table um, to get it to pop in. Ugh, they're so hard to pop in. There it goes. And, and I just put the back on. And I'm all set to go. That's all there is to it. And then you can just buy packs of four um, platinum carbon cartridges by platinum. Um, they'll fit into these pens. You can't just buy any converter either. you got to get the one that fits that pen. So if you're not sure, you can Google it. <clears throat> but anyway, um, got this old piece of Arches paper here that was from my sun and moon painting last year. I'm just going to get my pen writing again. There we go. That's writing. And I'm going to go ahead to, and where did I put my cap? Oh, there it is. I'm going to go ahead with the brown ink first, and I want to just do my slats on the wood here. Let's see if I can get that in there for you. Um, Hopefully this will look okay. It should once I put the um, I think that's going to work fine. I'm going to put some wood grain in it too very lightly.
There. So that worked out fairly well with the wood grain. I'm going to take a little, um, either a brush or if it doesn't come up, I'll use Magic Eraser. You know, somebody mentioned that the other day too. In one of my older videos, I did discuss, I think it was back when I did the review on the John Selman in watercolor book, that coffee table book that I got for Christmas that I loved so much. Um, I discussed um, using Magic Eraser to pull out lines. That's what John Selman in does in his paintings. He'll pull lines back with the Magic Eraser and it works beautifully. He just cuts little pieces off. So I usually carry around a little piece with me, but I've never used it on camera. For this, I may go ahead and do that because I've got that sap green there. And I'm not sure if that's staining or not offhand. I can't remember, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. Also, I want to get my... I'm using a point zero zero five uh, marker to do my brickwork because I want those lines to be super thin and this pen is drying out a little bit, which is really nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in my brickwork. And you've seen me do that before, so I'm not going to do it on camera. Someone asked me recently in another video about gouache and wondered if I had used some gouache in my painting, which I had. Um, and I keep it in this little container. It's Winsor & Newton designer gouache and I usually keep some white with me because it's really versatile. I can use that to make my transparent colors opaque which is what I did here. I used it for the pink and then also um, in my greens to get some more layering of my greens in and it really added a lot of depth to my trees so um, that's why I used it. And then I did use a little bit of white pen here and a little bit of white pen down here in the water. And that's about it. So um, this is the finished painting. Okay, so here's my completed painting. Um, I did it a lot differently than the other one. I'm going to show you a comparison side by side. Here is the other one that I did, the sketch that I did in my sketchbook that was real quick. Um, fairly simple. You know, like I said, when you're working in a sketchbook, it's not about making beautiful paintings. Sure, you can do that, but it's more about practicing and honing in on things. And in this, I learned something. I learned how I like to do the brick on my brickwork for buildings, but um, this wasn't meant to be a gorgeous painting. And I caught some flack from that person who was saying that it looked like a coloring book. <laughs> but um, it's just the style that I did in that. Now here is the actual painting finished. And you can see it's very different from the one over here to the one over here. Um, a lot more detail in the trees and everything, yet you still know what your focal point is. It's this. Um, I also was able to add more water in. I had more space and I realigned things a little bit. And I really loved how this part, por portion turned out down here in the rocks. That's probably the favorite spot for me on this painting. And the funny thing is, is that once it's matted, it's going to come in a half inch. So all of this will be cut off. It'll probably start about there. Um, you know, like above my thumbnail. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it'll still look okay. Some of the rocks will show, but, but anyway, I really liked that one spot. But um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know this was kind of a repeat, but you can see the difference between my sketching style and my painting style. Um, everybody remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Have a great day, and God bless you. Bye-bye.